Welcome to this time of prayer and the study of God's Word. I trust that you're ready for a new day, walking with our God and seeking to serve Him in all that we do and say. We're focusing as a church on our acts of service. We are remembering that God has given us such a marvelous opportunity with this virus to speak to people. People are more open now than they ever have been in a long time. And so our prayer is that as a church, God will be working in and through us, uh, that we will be looking for those opportunities for witness and testimony and service. And we would love to hear how God is working in and through you, giving you opportunities to minister to others. Uh, we'd also like you to be praying for our summer interns as they begin planning for summer ministry and the challenges that COVID-19 presents. Um, we don't expect that our ministry this summer is going to look like it did in previous summers. Um, there may be things that we can do that we've done before, but it's very possible that our interns are going to have to rethink the way that they do ministry. And they certainly need our wisdom and their guidance and protection. And so let's be praying that God will help them. And uh, let's be praying for Thomas, as uh, Pastor Thomas, as he gives insight and oversight to the summer interns as they go through this process. Now, uh, our hymn for the day is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. This is a tremendous hymn of encouragement. So as I read it, I trust that if you're feeling downhearted or discouraged in any way, that this hymn will be uh, a blessing to your soul. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one. Lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus, and as I was, weary and worn and sad, I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water. Thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun, and in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. Uh, what a blessed reminder of the light that shone into our lives when we came to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we experienced in him uh, our dear shepherd, our guide, our help, our friend. And brothers and sisters, that remains for us to this day. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we drew near to him, uh, then we can draw here near to him today. And may that be our attitude of heart, resting and trusting in our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our hymn for the day, uh, it, or sorry, our verse for the day, is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Uh, and you'll, as I read these verses, they'll be very familiar to you. And uh, certainly we heard of these words uh, being echoed in the hymn that we have just that I've just read. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Oh, what a, again, what a blessed day it was when we came to that knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we walk with him, we find these realities about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we find them, uh, we experience them day by day as we walk with him. Now, our text uh, for uh, our devotions this morning is James chapter 1, beginning at verse 22. In order to give us a, a little bit of uh, context, we'll start reading at verse 19 and we'll read to the end of the pas passage. So I hope that as I'm reading, you've got your Bible ready, uh, have it open, perhaps uh, a notebook and a pen. 
Uh, we as uh, brothers and sisters need to be working hard at uh, studying the Word of God. Um, it, it's work, and but it's a profitable work, and I trust that this is your attitude as we study uh, the Word of God. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. Our prayer as we study it is that you would be our teacher. Father, open our minds and our hearts, give us understanding. Father, where we need to repent or change our behavior or cease doing certain things, we look to you for grace to do that. And Father, where uh, we read and we find ourselves in accordance with your word, we thank you. Lord, we're grateful for the way in which you lead and guide us, continuing to draw us along and sanctify, sanctify us and make us more and more like our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you for your gracious work in our hearts and lives, and may this uh, study of your word be a further step in our walk with you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's start at verse 22. But, but, okay, that little word, but, three letters, points us back, okay? So when we're studying our Bibles, we need to remember that every word that we have written for us is there for a reason. None, none are unimportant but points us back. What's it point back to? Well, if we go back to the previous verses, uh, James says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to be, speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, um, don't know exactly. We're not told the situation. We're just given a general picture here of... Um, being quick to hear, slow to speak. Obviously, the tongue is being used in a manner that is uh, sinful, uh, destructive, and it's a result of anger, uh, unrighteous anger. And uh, then we come to verse 22, and it says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Very, very important statement. This is a, a key theme in James' letter. Now notice in this verse that James calls professing believers to be doers rather than simply um, having done something. Uh, they're, they're, they are to be characterized as people who are in action. They are at work. They are doers. And their entire personality should be characterized this way. Their lives should be characterized this way. And notice um, the warning. He says, um, be doers and not hearers only. Okay, if you're just a hearer and not a doer, you are deceiving yourself. And that word deceiving means to be beside yourself. And it was used in mathematics to refer to a miscalculation. And professing Christians who are content with only hearing the word have made a serious spiritual miscalculation. Now, some of you may be listening and saying, hmm, okay, that's interesting. What is that, that uh, serious miscalculation? Well, the Bible gives it to us in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 21 through 28. So turn in your Bibles to that passage, Matthew chapter 7, and we'll begin reading at verse 21. This is a very 
uh, well-known passage, and it's um, both shocking and fearful. And uh, we need to take this so seriously. It says in verse 21, not everyone. So uh, people are standing before the Lord Jesus Christ for judgment or approval. And um, this is what Jesus says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Notice the word does. You see it's present tense, ongoing. Uh, think back to James you know, be a doer of the word. A Christian is a doer. Verse 22, on that day, on the judgment day, many, okay, this is, again, this is the shocking part. Many, many who um, want to enter into, the, into heaven, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? So these people appear to be doers. They're looking at these and saying, hey, we were doing these things. Notice what Jesus says in verse 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So obviously, though they were doers, they were whatever they were doing was not being done in the right spirit and with the right attitude. Okay, let's keep reading. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, these words that he's just spoken, People are going to stand before them, th stand before him, thinking that they should get into heaven. And he's saying, uh, some many of those are going to uh, hear those shocking words, I never knew you, depart from me. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and what? Does them, does what? Jesus' words. Okay? will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. What rock? The rock of God's word. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock, on the truth. And everyone who hears these words of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Oh, what a warning to us. Um, not, to be, to, uh, not to make this uh, great mistake of um, not building our lives upon the word of God, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so let's go back to James now, James chapter 1, verses, verses 22 and following, okay? So, having read Matthew chapter 7, let's read again, beginning at verse 22. But be doers, be, continuous present, be doers, continually working out the word in your life, and not hearers only. I'm thinking about the verse that says, let the word, that's in Colossians chapter 3, let the word of God dwell in you richly. That's how we walk in the spirit, by the way. For if anyone, okay, be, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man or a woman who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. Now remember that mirrors in James' day were usually pieces of highly polished metal. It could be uh, brass or bronze, or if you were very rich, it might even be gold. But you can imagine that a piece of polished metal did not reflect perfectly. Uh, if you were to really look at yourself in a piece of polished metal, you'd squint your eyes and really look closely to see exactly uh, what was there and perhaps what, 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 what you needed to correct or fix. So this is the image, imagery that we have here. He's looking intently because he can't see very clearly. Verse 24, for he looks at himself, he looks intently, he's looking carefully, but what does he do? He goes away and at once forgets what he looked like, what he was like. Oh, may that not be true of us, brothers and sisters. You know, I'm thinking about Matthew chapter 7. 
Um, it's so easy for us to uh, have our checklist. You know, I went to church, I gave my offering, you know, I did good deeds, I didn't do this, I did that. And uh, while, you know, it's important for us to walk faithfully and, and obediently to the law of God, um, what this is talking about here is a uh, putting ourselves under the microscope or the examination of the Word of God to really show us what we're really like. And as we see what we're really like, uh, we, we repent, we uh, seek to grow, we trust in the grace of God and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are working at our um, sanctification. We are working at that along with the Holy Spirit. Now remember, that's the Holy Spirit's work in us to sanctify us and make us like the Lord Jesus Christ. But remember, it's, it's twofold. It's not just the Holy Spirit working, it's us also. We're not trusting in our efforts, we're trusting in God and we're as, as we are working, but that is what should be happening in the life of every believer. We are being transformed into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are working, the Holy Spirit is working, and as we do that, as uh, we are being transformed. For he looks, verse 24, at himself and goes away and forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's simply uh, uh, a way of speaking about the word of God, uh, and perseveres, so he's not going away, or she is not going away and then forgetting what was there, but is taking those things that have been revealed and working upon them, thinking upon them, meditating upon them, praying upon them, working them out in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres, uh, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Well, brothers and sisters, I trust that that has been uh, an encouragement to you, a, a warning as well. Uh, I, I don't want anybody to be going away from this, uh, you know, dejected and fearful. We don't need to do that. If we are true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, perhaps we have, have been guilty of not being faithfully in the Word of God. Um, well, confess it, repent of it, and commit yourself to start being a doer of the word. The only way that you can be a doer of the word is to know what the word says and submit yourself to that. Remember the imagery that's given in this passage of a person who is intently, carefully looking into the, into the word of God and examining himself or herself in the light of that word and then uh, making the changes by the power of the Holy Spirit that, that, that they see uh, are required in that work. That, that's, that's what a true believer looks like. Uh, nowhere does the Bible envision people making a profession of faith and then um, sticking that profession of faith in their back pocket like a life insurance policy that guarantees their entrance into heaven. Brothers and sisters, those who live like that are going to be the people in Matthew chapter 7 who stand before Jesus only to hear him say, depart from me, I never knew you. So, brothers and sisters, be a doer. I pray that that will be true of all of us, that we will be doers of the word. And uh, may that characterize you, may that characterize me. Uh, let's commit ourselves to be that kind of people, doers of the word. Well, Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. And uh, Father, we've heard some very hard and difficult things that have come right from the, the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we don't want to be those people in Matthew chapter 7 who stand shocked before you at the judgment day, uh, thinking we're going to go to heaven only to be cast into hell. Oh, our Father, we thank you that you've opened your word and shown us how we can avoid being shocked on that day. Lord, give us grace to be doers of your word. And Father, if we're going to be doers, we've got to know your word. We've got to read it. We need to study it. We need to meditate on it. We need to um, uh, pray it back to you and, and pray it into our lives. Oh, may that characterize us as your people. And then our Father, uh, we need to do that in dependence upon your Holy Spirit. Because Father, apart from you, we can do nothing. 
And so, Lord, we look to you and pray that by your Holy Spirit, as we uh, commit ourselves to be doers of the word, that your Holy Spirit would do his sanctifying work in us, uh, making us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ, making us salt and light in this dark world, so that when the day of judgment comes, we will stand with confident hearts, knowing that uh, we have a sure entrance into eternal life. And so, Father, we ask these things and we pray them in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, I'm, my prayer for you is um, that you will pass this along to others who might have need of it. Again, leave your comments, your questions, your insights, prayer requests, how the Lord is using you to minister to, uh, to others. Would love to see that. And uh, I'm going to leave you with this benediction. I, I think I'm going to start doing this on a regular basis because I think it really summarizes uh, the benedictions in the New Testament. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.